Hello and welcome to Natural Focus. I am Maria Olasheinde. In pursuance of this noble task of moving Natural State forward and the desire to create a modern state, Governor Tanko Almakura embarked on a number of projects that has now left the state better than he met it. This week's episode features some key public office holders in Natural State as the Lord, the state governor for his developmental projects and people-oriented policies in the last eight years. As at 2011, Nasarara State had been in existence for 15 years, where economic growth was a mirage and sustainable development looked like it was on a mannequin challenge. Upon becoming the fifth executive governor of the state, Governor Tanko Amakura made it his utmost goal to develop Nasarara in terms of physical infrastructure industrial input and commercial activities hinged on the values of transparency, accountability and good governance. Fast forward to almost eight years later and key government officials attest to how well the architect of modern Nasarawa has delivered the dividends of democracy to the people by every means possible. Tonkwa Almakura led administration cannot be thanked enough by the people of Nasarawa State. We cannot thank him enough. This is because he has really touched the lives of the citizenry of Nasarawa State. In fact, we will start from the common things ordinary people do or need, like the, the neighborhood market. Rains are about to come now. At rainy season, you cannot step into that market and get out of it freely. The neighborhood market was so congested, you know, so jam-packed. You will see mud everywhere. If you enter that place and come back, you must go and get yourself bath off. But now you can walk into that place, you know, even barefooted and come out neatly. He has brought it to the standard that it can compete with any market in any state. Talk about the international market along the road, if you go there, you, no, no, no market in any state can beat that market. You know, he has renovated the modern market, has commissioned it, and people are enjoying it now. These are, these are places that people go on daily basis. Taal has started with that, he started with that, and people are happy. Talk about houses. The 500 units uh, houses along Doma Road have been renovated, people are are enjoying it, come to Nasarawa Housing Estate at Makoti Road. He, up to this moment I'm talking to you, he's renovating some of those uh, houses. He's bringing it to the, to, a, to, a, to, a, to the standard that people will be happy living in it. Ta'al, Ta'al government is a government that we can never, never forget in this state. We can never forget because we cannot talk about all the houses he has constructed in these few minutes that I'm giving at this program. We have the High Court. I have visited the High Court. We have shown it. He has shown it to the whole world, not only Nasara State, to see what he's doing. Because government, government was brought to a standard that government house was brought to a standard that any governor or even the president can work in there comfortably. The state assembly was also brought to that level, that standard that is expected of the state. So the judiciary level, the judiciary uh, 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 arm is not left behind. He considered that, that is why he decided to bring that high court to that level, to that standard. And he's ensuring that the contractors meet up with the standard he has given to them and even the time frame so that he'll be able to commission it before he leaves. Do you talk about the 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 Dr. Araf Specialist Hospital, the hospital that people were congested, patients had nowhere to stay. Now he has expanded it to a level that, in fact, people from all the other states can visit and stay. They, they, they are enough clinics now that patients will be attended to. He didn't stop at that. He has decided to build uh, 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 doctor's quarters. There are four-man quarters, there are six-man quarters that are built for consultants that are on duty that will be called easily to attend to patients. Some of them have reached, uh, have, have been completed and painted, just waiting for, 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 for the tenants to move in, you know. 
So he, he, and he has built them so close to the hospital that they can just walk into the hospital. And we have this uh, new school of nursing. The new school of nursing has been properly brought to the level that we have to just thank His Excellency. We have to thank him so much. We have uh, lecture halls in the School of Nursing, you know. We have uh, uh, demonstration uh, rooms in the School of Nursing. In fact, they are expanding, they, they want to build more uh, um, hostels, both for male and female, in the same School of Nursing. So we, we must thank him so much for touching the lives of the people of Nasarawa State. We have liaison office, Nasarawa liaison office in Abuja. We cannot complete this program without that, that, that office. The Nasarawa liaison office is, content, is, is, is built to a standard that we have about 110 rooms. 110 rooms where people can go and rent at a reasonable amount, which is going to be a source of revenue generation to Nasarawa State. You know, because by the, the day we went to visit that place, some of our colleagues slept in the, 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 our neighboring liaison offices and they paid some amount of money. They are already generating revenue, so our own will not be left behind. It's going to be a source of revenue, great revenue generation to Nasarawa State because people are going to rent those rooms and they will pay. Apart from the office, the governor's office that is there, and people are going to, to, to make some small, small businesses around that area too. So the liaison office is also something we must talk about. We, we, cannot, we cannot leave the, the, the e-library where the, the, the state government has built, where people have gone to, they are, to, to, to learn, to get uh, uh, knowledge, not only by opening books or going to dictionary and all of that, you know, but it, it has gone beyond that. It has become the modern uh, library, you know, and some of our youth in this state are really enjoying that e-library. Do you, do you talk about uh, Taal disease control, which is one of its kind in the West Africa? Taal disease control is, is a place that is going to help the people of Nasara State from wasting resources, their time, traveling all the way to Edo State. When people were going to, 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 to test for Lassa fever, or all these diseases, they have to travel all the way to Edo State. But now it is brought under our nose. We can come, you can come to Nasara State and, and test and have your test done for Lassa fever, for uh, all sorts of diseases. It's there. It's, it's just one of its kind in West Africa. We thank you very much, Governor Omar Tonkola Almakura. We cannot thank you enough. We are waiting that you are going, we know you are going to do more than this as you come back for, for, for just to attend to the southern part of Nasarawa State alone. I thank you very much. I'm praying that, I'm calling on the people of Nasarawa State to keep praying for this able governor, the architect of modern Nasarawa State, the beacon of justice, Governor Omar Tongwa and Makura, that he, as he's living, uh, the God that we serve, we continue to be with him. I'm also calling on the people of Nasarawa State to give him all the cooperation. It's because of the kind of person he is, that he's the architect of Nasarawa State. He wants to bring the engineer of Nasarawa State, who will come and complete and build what that, all that he has laid down to a certain level. And that is why he has brought in uh, engineer A.A. Sule to take over from him. I pray and hope that the people of Nasara State will give him all the cooperation they have given to Governor Omar Tonko Almakura. Governor Omar Tonko Almakura has done um, a lot of good things to all facets of health care delivery in um, Nasara State. If you look at primary health care structure in the state, um, before he came, actually they were in a state of disrepair. But he was able to transform the whole PHC system in the state. It was during his time that um, we have seen the full implementation of the ENSHIP program, which has resulted in um, rejuvenation of PHCs in almost all the local government, almost all the PHCs in the state were affected. Either as um, the where you have the intervention, 
or where you, you use as control, but all of them are, have been actually been uh, positively affected by the policy. And that is why um, any PHC, government PHC that you go to in Nasarawa State, you find out that there are equipment, there are staff, everything has been improved. Then, um, it's the same thing when you go to secondary health sector in the state. There was a time that you could find a lot of general hospitals without doctors. But right now, all the general hospitals have doctors, some even more than one, two, or even uh, three. And then um, there are a lot of renovations, a lot of structures coming up in the general hospitals. And uh, when you look at the tertiary care, that is the specialist hospital. What Umaru um, Tonko Almakura has provided for the specialist hospital now, you can say it is more than what he made on ground. And to cap it all, we even have a CT scan now. Not many hospitals have it in the country. So in terms of manpower, we have um, a lot of consultants coming in, being employed by the government, a lot of doctors, a lot of other health workers, pharmacies, nurses, and uh, we have new structures now coming up in the teaching, um, in the specialist hospital. Uh, you have admin block coming up, more wards, almost 200 beds now being added. We now have a new radiology block. So right now, our specialist hospital can actually be called a tertiary hospital, unlike what it was before. And uh, when it comes to issue of policy, it was during his time that we had the uh, strategic development plan, a five-year plan that is just being put into implementation now. So it is a good thing. And unlike the plans that we've had in the past, this one is an implementable plan. Plan that was done by us and it's something that we are going to implement. We are just in the second year of the implementation of that plan now. So it is a great thing that he has done. And to cap it all, um, the set social health insurance scheme has been passed by the House of Assembly, has been assented to by the government, and the agency has been set up. Uh, it is going to be his greatest legacy in health sector. So, if you look at it holistically, he has touched almost every aspect of health delivery system in Nasarawa State. And uh, um, I think we have to say thank you to Anandji Morton Kwanmakura for all that he has done. And uh, we're hoping and uh, praying that wherever he goes, God will be with him. And uh, we're also calling on the, our new governor very pragmatic um, person himself to continue with um, where uh, uh, most of the Mankura has talked. Tributes continue to come in for the architect of modern Nasarawa, who in the last eight years have kept to his mantra of seeing as believing, especially in the area of raising the human capital index in the state through education. Commissioner for Education, Nasarawa State, Tijani Ahmad, highlights the achievements and milestones of the Tanko Almakura led administration in improving the sector. So, the first thing he did uh, when he came on board was to provide pre education to our students, right from primary to secondary level. And this has uh, enhanced our enrollment in our secondary schools in the state. Uh, I remember when, he, when we came aboard, uh, the total number of students we have in this last year in our, our schools were not more than uh, uh, 106 something thousand uh, students that we have in the state. But I want to tell you today, as he is now graduating or transiting or the way he is now exiting, uh, by our records, we have about 217,000 uh, uh, students in our 400 secondary schools that we have across in the state. Uh, this increase in the enrollment of students is a result of this free education. Now we are, we are able to remove this, the children from the street now and then put them into schools. This is one of the first steps that he has taken to ensure that uh, our, our our children in Nasarawa State receive uh, education. Uh, despite that, we you know he believes in the, in, in um, what we call inclusive governance. So for, for that reason, the the, the girls' child 
education too well, it was not even left uh, behind. He has to look into seeing that our our females, our female counterpart, or our children, the female children, were also uh, involved in the uh, educational uh, system. And on the, on the strength of that, with the collaboration with the UBEC, schools we are built specifically for, for, for our I mean, guest child school we are, we, are, we are constructed. We have one in Wondery uh, where we succeeded in removing a lot of uh, guests who are moving on the streets, hawking into schools. And we also have another one which has now been converted to police secondary school uh, in, uh, in, in, in Lafayette here. That one also has been put to use. We have another one in, uh, in, in Panda Development Area and uh, the one again in Bodega uh, Development Area, which we are making effort into seeing that that one also became effective as soon as possible. Why we have restrained from the from the um, uh, admitting uh, the uh, the girls now is because of this incident uh, insurgency, where some of these girls were being taken away by 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 hoodlums. So that's why uh, that that program has stopped for the meantime. But we wish that by the time the, the new government came into into being, probably they are going to take off from where we we stopped. So apart from the free education, which I have mentioned, which has I increased the level of enrollment of our uh, children into both primary and secondary schools. We also have uh, the issue of scholarship. Of course, if a child has been admitted and he has been taken to school, and uh, as a result of lack of uh, uh, financial capacity, the parents cannot uh, measure up. So the government of Nasrallah is under the leadership of uh, His Excellency, the Governor Al Makura decided to introduce a scholarship for our uh, students who might have graduated from secondary school and moving to the higher level. He introduces that specifically to ensure that he assists the, the, the students vis-a-vis -vis the parents so that it can reduce their burden. This is a very serious program that has been taken very seriously by this government and has, which has helped tremendously in the increasing the level of our students going to higher institutions of learning. But probably you may ask me, um, but why this program has stopped for the, for, for the past one year? Yes, because we have a huge, the person who is responsible in making sure that this program uh, continue as, 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 as arranged, as deviously got uh, involved in, uh, in, the, in the mismanagement of the fund, uh, which has been become a very serious problem to this. And before we get our level again, it has taken time. But now I want to inform you that uh, we have cleared this matter now. Another secretary has been appointed for the board, and a regimen is, make a, is, on, is, on, is, is being on the way to ensure that uh, uh, the program continues. And students very soon probably they will get their uh, allowances uh, as soon as practicable. And uh, uh, apart from the scholarship to higher education. His Excellency has graciously also approved the, the, the enrollment of students in, uh, in uh, a school in, in, in Zaria, Zaria Academy, where we, have, we are beginning with about five students. Uh, we selected um, within the three senatorial zones that we have, and we are sent to Zaria Academy. It's, 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 it's a very special school there. Uh, five of them are there under training now in that uh, and it is the Australian government that is paying it's the government that is paying everything everything including their transportation their uniforms their work and their NECO is being taken as scheduled uh, being shouldered by by the government of Nasarawa State. Also we have about 14 students that were sent to Sudan uh, reading different programs uh, academic programs some of them were reading medicine, some were reading engineering, others are reading uh, humanities and then uh, arts. About 14 of them were in Sudan International uh, University, Sudan. Uh, despite that, uh, you know, you have to provide an environment for learning for both the students and the staff. On the strength of that, as we came in on board here between 2000 and 
11 to date, His Excellency succeeded in renovating most of our secondary schools across the state, both in the western, northern, and then the southern uh, zones of, of the state. Uh, as I'm talking to you now, uh, renovations of some of these schools are ongoing, and, uh, and uh, the sum of over 1.5 uh, billion naira was put into this renovation. And uh, before the exit of this administration, I'm sure we are going to complete this renovation. But if you can go around, you will see the extent to which this government has gone in terms of renovating our secondary schools. And we did that in order to provide for an enabling environment for our students, for both our students, and an environment for living and also learning. And so that's why we have under the, this government has undergone into that uh, uh, action. Despite uh, the renovation of schools, in our charter institutions, we saw that uh, there is a need to improve the accommodation of our students. So on the strength of that, His Excellency graciously approved the construction of two-story buildings as hosted in each of our, our charter institutions. We have one in the University of Kefi, which is a state university, its own university. We have the College of Education at Kwanga. We have the College of Agric Life here, and we have the State Polytechnic uh, Life here too. All, uh, all these uh, institutions have benefited from this gesture, which was uh, provided by, by this administration. Uh, you see, what we saw that a lot of uh, insecurity in our schools, particularly in our secondary schools. His Excellency now decided to ensure that uh, uh, the students in our secondary school were secured. And by doing that, he, pro he decided to uh, award contract for the fencing of some of our secondary schools. As I'm talking to you, uh, some of our boarding secondary school we have been secured by way of uh, fencing them. If you go to government secondary school local, it is well fenced, secured for the living of our students. If you go to uh, government uh, secondary school in uh, Aguada, that also has been secured. In Aguada, we have two different boarding schools there. We have a school that was donated by His Excellency to the military. And now we have a command secondary school in Aguada. So uh, we provided the, the, the facilities there. And we also fenced the institution to in order to secure the environment. Also in Aguada Secondary School, we also, it's a boarding school there. It's a government-owned school there. That also has been secured and, and, and well fenced. If you come to, if you come to uh, government science secondary school, uh, Nasra Egon. Of course, you you clearly see that uh, uh, the, uh, we have fenced the, the place in order to secure the students. The same thing if you go to Alushi, if you go to government girls secondary school in Kiana, if you go to government girls secondary school Doma, you, all these areas that I have mentioned, and the schools we are secured in order to provide an enabling environment for learning and, and teaching of our of our students. Uh, you see, when you teach the students, or when you provide an enabling environment for teachers and for students, you must equally provide an enabling environment for the teachers so that, that we, we, we can have a balancing situation. Uh, where you provide a security for the students and you don't provide for the teachers, that is something this wrong. And so therefore, the government of the has to consider uh, the, the life and properties of our, of our teachers. So some of the... Uh, Accommodation that we have for teachers in our secondary school will soon, will very soon be undergo uh, renovations to provide comfort for the teachers and uh, also to give the teachers uh, a, a position of uh, progression. His Excellency has uh, uh, considerably allowed many of our teachers today to go for in service, where most of them go for further education. Either they go for BA for those that are holding NCE or they go for masters for those that have uh, uh, M MSc. So this is another area this has been exploited to ensure that we improve the standard of our edited teaching and learning in our secondary schools. Since assumption of office in 2011, Governor Tanko Almakura has taken time to address the infrastructural deficits in the state, reversing the norm through robust and deliberate programs that put the people first. From the urban renewal program to the revolution in healthcare delivery, transformation in the education sector and boosting environments, it is safe to say of the architect of modern Nasara that he came 
he saw and he has delivered. And that has been our package this week. Do join us again next week for another interesting episode. Thanks for watching. I am Maria Olasheinde.